How's the hay fever? Terrible. Perfect time. Three, two, one. We are back. Another episode. And may I tell you what a great job you did last time. Our viewers loved it. Why, thank you, good sir. Our viewers loved it. A lot of questions, a lot of new subscribers. So we want more of the same. More passion like you had for Dalton. Okay, well, what listen, got? I'm going to dial got? up the volume. Please do. I'm dialing up the volume. What do you got? We got cars, we got seaplanes, we got South Beach, we got boats, we got unstructured blazers, we got wayfarers, we got day dates, we got MTV cops, we got Art Deco. We don't have all day We got bro. South Beach. Like, what are you Did I repeat about? that? Encapsulate that. Miami Vice. Miami the coolest Vice. TV show there ever was, there ever is, there ever will be. All right. Give it away. All right. So Miami Vice. You're saying yeah. Miami Vice is the coolest TV show that ever was. The coolest was. TV show that ever was. Not the greatest. That ran five seasons. There's an argument for it being the greatest, but that's an episode for another time. I'm sticking with the coolest. Okay, fine. The coolest. Okay. Listen, I don't know much about Miami Vice. Never really watched it. I Inspired remember, generations. I get it. And you're right, because I do know it. I am aware of it. And that must be for a reason. First of all, what did every single boy want to be growing up? Batman. Wrong. Superman. Okay. Some people want it to be that. But when they were teenagers and they realized those flights of fancy were not accessible to them, what do they want to be? Hulk Hogan. No. What? Crime fighters. Okay, fine. Actually, Batman, yes, Batman and yeah, Superman. Batman, yes. Batman, yeah. They were they wanted to be crime Hogan. fighters. Okay? But I wanted to be the Iron Sheikh. But okay, okay, story. sorry, let me let me okay. let me let me just add a caveat. Yes. When they were coming into their, you know, into puberty Fine. what do they want to be good caveat okay uh, I'm guessing a character from Miami Vice <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay exactly. wow they wanted to be either Don Johnson or Philip Michael Thomas sure. or maybe Edward James almost sure. by the way for that matter sure. okay? and I mean, why I kind of wanted to be Jean-Claude Van Damme still but, uh, to this day okay I want to be a crime fighter alright okay I mean I fancy myself as a bit of a crime fighter alright so listen listen. I'm, today I'm an economic crime fighter but in the day I'm going to give I was, you okay I'm going to so, give you this alright okay so give me your first reason as to why you say Miami Vice is the coolest show that ever was for Macro economic. You're going macro now. Macro economic yes. aspirational reasons. Aspirational. Okay. okay. What did I want to be when I was young? I wanted to fight crime, right? Right. What did I want to be when I was a little bit older? A crime fighter who dressed well. Okay. Right? Lived on a boat, drove a Testarossa and a Ferrari Daytona before that. Sure. Okay. When I was in my 20s, what did I want to be? A crime fighter who wore nice suits, had a bit of designer Jamie, stuff. Did you ever want to be a crime fighter? I don't think I wanted to be a crime fighter that bad. Okay. Uh, 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 wore a Rolex Day Date. Okay. Um, uh, uh, rocked a mullet. Okay. Fine. And what do I want to be today in my 40s? A crime fighter, I'm guessing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there well, were lots of very, very strong aesthetic, uh, what do you call it, aspirational reasons. Okay? okay. And you know what the Miami Vice silhouette is. Okay. It's one of the most famous silhouettes there is. Okay. Not a silhouette. You mean the imagery, the, the iconography. Imagery. You know, yeah. the iconography and imagery, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? I, okay, fine. Yeah. Sorry. My bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you know what it looks like. Right? What, what does it look like? Pastel blazer. Fine. Okay. Usually a Henley top of a different pastel color. Okay. okay. My personal favorite was the lime green pastel with the cream jacket and the lilac pants All right. and the brown espadrilles. The only issue I had with the espadrilles, do you remember what the espadrille was? Can you, yeah, educate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you educate our subscribers and our followers it's about like, what the espadrille you know, it's was? It's like one of those boat shoes that have like straw soles. Made of wicker. Thank if you. I'm not mistaken, okay, good, good. there's only good one problem. Bits. I rocked all. I still to this day rock that attire, it, barring the espadrilles. Why don't I rock the espadrilles? Because Alex. you don't live in Miami. You live wrong. <laughs> because they're the only shoes out there that don't have an elevation on them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My boy needs short a bit people of a lift. like me. He needs a okay. bit of a lift. So I, I can't hey. get away with it, you know. So short like, kings. Yeah, power exactly. To you. Boom. Okay. Anyway, listen. Let me tell you something. Okay. For all right. Go on. I yeah. Tell me something. For to, nothing, like, yes. I think I need to translate. Translate. He's saying, I'm sure not everybody out there wants to be a crime fighter, but yes, had sex, sun, sand, Ferraris, girls, you know, drugs. It was quite cool. I get it. Aspirational, if you like, sure. Second point. Okay. Second point, okay. Music. It was the show that basically first used uh, its platform um, as a stage for rock bands, uh, both established uh, stars, uh, fading stars, uh, okay. upcoming stars. Okay. I mean, okay. one of the most famous scenes of all time is in the pilot episode, My Brother's Keeper. Right. Write that down. I will. Where Crockett and Tabs are driving the uh, Ferrari Daytona. Thank you. They've got a rendezvous at night. Sure. Okay. 
cocking their guns. Yep. Driving. Great. Hair shimmering. Can we just get to the song? Shimmering, simmering okay. in the wind. What's the okay. song? I can feel it coming in the air tonight. So what, are you telling me that was oh first? Oh, no. Are you telling me that was first played out on Miami Vice? And I can feel it. Go Anyways, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Abu. It wasn't. Abu J. Okay, it, it wasn't. wasn't. It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't. But that's but how it got global recognition. That's what you're going to well, tell me. Well, I mean, I don't know if it got global. Neither that. But, okay, it, but, it, but, it, but, it, but it certainly... So it cert just happened to be on the show. But I get it. It, it was, was one of the most famous okay. iconic scenes of all fine, time fine. featuring music in a television show. All right? Okay. What other musicians and music bands were on this well, show? Well, where do I start? The Barge. The Barge. In a beat of the rhythm of the night, dance until the morning light. Okay. All of Peter Gabriel's uh, discography yeah. was uh, featured there. They're okay. not very happy. Much of Phil Collins. Okay. And by the way, Phil Collins, an exceptional star turn in Miami Vice before playing oh, Buster right. in the episode Phil the Shill in uh, season two. Okay, so Phil Collins was on the show. Absolutely. His music played on the show. Yep. I mean... And he did a an, uh, now an unreleased... Um, well, he I think it was like two verses and a chorus. Okay. Life is a rat race chasing easy money. Uh, it was an homage to the fact that he was basically a rat in the show. Okay, I get he it. Was so Phil we have Phil Collins, we have the okay. Do you have anybody else? Sting, okay. Billy Idol, Dire Straits, by the way, in the episode Out Where the Buses Don't Run. Okay, one of the most hauntingly oh. beautiful. Let me finish. No, no, but this, this just made me think of something. I remember reading somewhere, no one, yes. or maybe you even telling me, yes. that it was like... MTV meets what? What was that? Analogy? MTV Cops. MTV Cops. That was your original pitch. That's correct for sir. Miami Vice. That's correct, MTV sir. MTV Cops. So it makes sense. All that music, great. Yeah. Okay. So the music. I'll give you the music. You like the music? I like the music. What else you got? I just wanted to reference out where the buses don't run, for those people oh, that don't know about it. Huh? Yeah, yeah. We'll get to that. We'll get to the director. Okay. Out where the buses don't run. <laughs> Crockett and Tubbs are also Thank you, Jamie. late at night. Getting too big for his boots. That one. Let me tell you. Driving the Daytona. Okay. Yeah to their rendezvous point and in the background the hauntingly beautiful Brothers in Arms sung by Dire Straits from the album Money for Nothing a rendition one of the gr these miscolored mountains are home now for me I've waited the long I can't remember okay that, very good very good okay anyway, so yeah. some big bands featured on the show some new artists featured on the show so it gave a platform to like music in a big way. Correct. Okay. The secret to success, by the way, whether it's women or money, is knowing when to quit. I should know. I'm divorced and broke. Sonny Crockett's one of his famous lines. Right. By the way, I just great. wanted to reference that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel All that right. way. Okay. Now, I feel that what, way in my okay, everyday so life. What else you got? All right. Are we happy with the music? I'm happy with the music. I'm not so happy with the uh, uh, the lifestyle and the. Uh, no. Yeah, I mean. We'll get. We'll come back to it. Let me think you, on it. You, 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 you know, you could go far if you just change your wardrobe a little bit. All right. Saying. Well, listen. We don't. We're not living in Miami. I can't dress like we're in Miami when we're not. Well, I do. Look how successful I am. I'm, I'm doing this podcast. All right. Eighty-six view. Go on. Next. How next. Subs are we on? We're on seventy-eight. That's right. All right. Keep them coming, people. Keep All them right. Coming. Okay. Subscribe. Subscribe. All right. Okay. Subscribe. Okay. Guest stars. Right. Guest stars. Guest stars. Guest star. Well, okay. actually, I should say, actually, I wouldn't even call them guest stars because what is the definition of a guest star? That's somebody who's famous who comes on the show. Actually, they were There's actually a cameo. People. James Brown was on the show. Amazing. I can love you, can James you, Brown. Can you do a rendition of a James Brown? Ha! What was it? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank Very you. good. Miles <laughs> Davis was on the show. Miles Davis. Love Miles okay. Davis. We saw Phil Collins already. These are, okay. these are the established um, okay. uh, uh, pop stars. But, sure. but, but, but. No, no, okay, but actors. You're saying actors. actors. Julia Roberts. Okay, sure. You've heard about wait, her. Wait, 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 wait. First of all, what years did this show run? You haven't given 84 to 89. So Julia Roberts was pretty much a nobody back then. Correct. So you're saying Miami Vice gave her her start? Yeah, I, sorry, I meant to, I meant to, uh, what to articulate, clarify. Not so much. There were guest stars, but there were also soon to be big stars like Julia Roberts. Okay, I'm just trying to help you here. So, what you're trying to say is, in your argument, that if it wasn't for Miami Vice, some of these stars that you're about to mention would be maybe still. Would not have got their break. Okay, so. Bruce Willis. Ju Julia Roberts, Bruce Willis, fine. Chris Rock. Really? Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller as well. John Leguizamo. Okay, what did I tell you before? Slow down so I can bring up the pictures. Sorry, All me. right, <clears throat> go back to it. Okay, Ben Stiller. So Ben Stiller was in the show as well. Yes. 
he was um, I'm just going to say it very slowly he was in movies like uh, Zoolander and, no 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 no, um, no 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 yeah yeah yes. yeah, yeah, yeah okay fine and um, Dodgeball okay yes okay yes. fine who else did you have Bruce Willis was in films like Die Hard I get it who did he play Die in the Hard show two. Baddies Okay. He was a big. He was. He was a famous. Oh, were all the, all the all the characters bad guys? No, there was sure. a there was a mix, but a lot of them were baddies. Okay. Uh, Julia Roberts played like a gangster's mole. Okay. In uh, one of the latter seasons. Okay. In actually the end of the fourth season. Fine. Um, which. Um, so they have all these guest stars and these up and coming actors. Who Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith. Of soon to be L.A. Law fame. Okay. Very good. And The West Wing. Very good. Where he played. Um, Democratic presidential candidate, something Santos. Very good. Go on. No, my point is, <laughs> yes. those people though don't necessarily make the show good. Or I mean, maybe they make it cool. You better have a good like fourth point. I think the point I'm saying that, here yes. is that if you want to watch it retrospectively, now that we know these stars, now that we've like you know lived through them vicariously over all these years, seen them in all these films, it's very cool to watch them. You know, in right. their right. nascent part, right. the right. embryonic part of their careers. Right. You get what I'm saying, Alex? Write that down. If only I could have a break like that. Well, okay, it's so coming. It's coming. It's coming. But right? not on Miami Vice because it's done. Well, we are hoping for a reboot soon. Okay, okay, so so far we have aspirational. Yes. Fine. You have the good music. Correct. You have, you know, giving rise to big actors. Correct. What else you got? All right. And a very important, uh, very important attribute for cinephiles and I don't know if there is a, a TV version of a cinephile but nevertheless pop culture addicts of all kinds <clears throat> people who are yeah exactly let me finish aficionados aficionados right never before had this kind of visceral style been seen on screen I'm not talking about and the what is the style qualities. okay so obviously we know Michael Mann was an executive producer on the show right Anthony Yurkovich Dick Wolf all these guys were you know a part of the uh the genesis of the show, right? And what they managed to achieve is to do a one hour episode or 40 minute episode, whatever the syndication time was of a typical show, and to make it look like a high budget film, which had never before been done. And even to the, today, if you revisit old episodes, it's astonishing when you compare it to, you know, other shows that were being syndicated at the time, whether it was, I don't know, MacGyver or Magnum, Hill Street Blues. Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap, they actually looked and felt like TV shows. Do, right, right. Yes. Miami Vice looked and felt like a film like Heat. And is it because of the influence of Michael Mann? Like, what did he do? He directed a, Absolutely, a yeah. couple of seasons, I believe, right? Yeah, he was he was he heavily was involved part in of it, executive yeah. producer, but also, yeah. And then he like went on director. to make Heat, Collateral, Miami Vice, the film, which is not great. Well, you love that film. I do. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I mean, I, no, 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 no. Blaspheme. No, 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 no. To be clear, I love aspects of that film. Okay, There's well, so we'll come on to that. Okay. Okay. But, um, but, um, and in any case, also, I think they, the, the budget was something like a million dollars per episode back then, which was like astounding and record breaking. And um, interesting footnote, okay, on this, that they wanted to uh, get Jeff Bridges, who was actually a big, film actor at the time Nick Nolte as well in the Sonny Crockett role that we went to Don Johnson even considered Mickey Rourke by the way uh, but these guys considered television to be a massive step down from cinema if only opposed, they knew as opposed to today if when only it's all they the way around, knew. Right? Yeah, exactly right who else was in the show itself by the way what do you mean there's some other big actors right Edward James Olmos I mean a powerhouse what a legend powerhouse performance throughout as Detective Marty Castillo King of the Stair you want me to uh, imitate it? I think that's a yes. I'm gonna look into your eyes and then look into the camera's eyes, right? Okay. <laughs> Don't scare me, okay, please. Wait, six, six, six. <laughs> Don't ever come this close to me again. Okay. Sorry. No. Sorry. This is this is this is method acting. Okay. Don't ever come up this close to me again. I would Jamie get the Oscar. I literally <coughs> said no dead air. Go on. Anyway. Yes. 
<laughs> okay, fine. So, so we have good actors. You said something about how it made it look like a film. Anything else? Listen, one thing I will say. Go on. Not that I know much no, okay, about it. this TV show, but it is highly referenced. I think it's influenced a lot. The style of it, even the like, even the logo, the video games. What is it? Oh. Uh, Grand Theft Auto. So it's like basically a knockoff of uh, Miami Vice. So now right? we're talking Vice City, the other Vice City one, and other like uh, you know kind of um, GTA, the Rockstar games. Yeah, 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 exactly. All based around that sort of aesthetic, right? Hundred percent. There's, there's a name for that aesthetic. Vaporwave. The vaporwave. And so can you explain the vaporwave? And did it stem from Miami Vice? Well, it stemmed from Miami and Miami okay. Vice together, uh, okay. right? Okay, I have to admit I'm plagiarizing a bit here because I think it's a very, very important point that my colleague and co-host and cohort brings up. Go vaporwave. On. Go on. Because I had to really, really think and reconcile what it meant. Good. I couldn't actually capture it. Fine. So I had to actually Google this. Okay. What is vaporwave? Right? What is it? I'm just going to say the aesthetic with full with characters incorporates early internet imagery, late 1990s web design, glitch art, cyberpunk tropes, as well as anime, Greco-Roman statues, 3 d rendered objects, okay. and Can VHS I, it, degradation. It's basically Art Deco with a lot of pink neon. Right? Sorry, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Thank you. I could have just. All right, fine. So, yes, that sort of influence, even the suits, as you were saying, Correct. and the cars, the white Testarossa. I mean, everybody wanted a white Testarossa, Correct. I guess, at a certain age after seeing it on Miami Vice, right? The hair, and it just and it just brought Miami to the fore, right? Correct, absolutely. Because so, Miami, I remember, I mean, not that I remember, but I know that, like, in the 70s, it was a bit of a dump. Correct. And then suddenly, Miami is the place to be. So I think a couple of years earlier when with did Scarface. So 83. Oh, so it came out after Scarface. One year after. Okay, so yeah, all happening around the same time. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that, um, I don't know if it would like have necessarily put Miami on the map. It didn't revolutionize it. No. But it contemporized it. Yeah. But right? there's a lot of films and TV shows now that are kind of based around that Miami Vice idea. Absolutely. A lot of like buddy cop movies yeah like was there a lot of body cop before my bad Vice? boys yeah oh I mean, before that yeah. no no not so much but actually i mean when you think about butch cassie and sundance but it's not quite the same thing okay and also you know what would follow i mean harley davidson the marlboro man oh that's basic yeah don johnson harley davidson the marlboro man we could do a show on that we got to do a show on that. Think of that yeah it's all true. right that's the next okay, show but, what else you got okay but i i think the point you're making about uh pop culture influence yes. is very very pivotal because right. i think for a show that only ran the, five yeah. years even the, the soundtrack away from the musical guests all right? this, the heavy synthesizer jan yes. hammer's heavy yes. synthesis jan hammer jan hammer who's that the composer Five. Okay. You remember the uh, you remember the uh, what's it called the Miami Vice scene related to the <laughs> army hammer. <laughs> Boy likes that flesh. Anyway, continue. Uh, oh, he anyways, you remember? Just say, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. Oh, no, I don't know the answer to that. Yes. Okay. Um, so, so uh, pop synthesizer um, that also was um, also. Um, not publicized, but also not and imitated by Harold Faltermeyer on Beverly Hills Cop. Okay, Faltermeyer. Faltermeyer. What a great Jan name. Jan Hammer and Jan, and, uh, Jan Faltermeyer. Okay. Okay, so pop culture influence. Yes. Yeah. On Art Deco as well. Like All it, right. It, it, you know, it kind of, yes, go on, you're going to say something, I can, I can tell. I'm going to say that I don't buy this. No? No, not that I think about I it. Because wasn't oh, Miami right. Vice even big in the UK? Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Well, it was Abu big. Jamie, big in the UK, thumbs up, thumbs down. He says yes. Okay, thumbs up. I don't remember it being that big. Well, you were like six. How would you have remembered? True. Right? True. Okay, let's talk about one more thing about it. Okay. Like so many, um, like so many iconic shows or films, uh, it didn't have a reboot, but it had a, a film adaptation come right, out in yes. 2006. Yeah. Starring Colin Farrell, Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Um, now, oh, yeah, and going back to why you said I, it's one of my favorite films. Okay. I love the style of it, but that's a Michael Mann style. That's yeah. not really exclusive to Miami Vice. No. Do you know what I mean? No. So that's what I love about it. I love that style of filmmaking, those light flares, that like, that anamorphic lens, the nighttime shots. The blue hues. The hues of blue and purple. Across that, the and, like, and just like the coolness of it. Yeah. He brings like a real element of cool to his filmmaking. You see that in Collateral, you see that in Heat. You see that in Manhunter. You see that in all those films. Agreed. So that's what I love about it. And yes, it has some cool things. But it's, is it an amazing film? Is it up there with the heat? Of course it's not. 
I agree with you. Yeah. And actually, it has no real. Uh, it doesn't have much of like a harkening back to the TV show. No. It actually doesn't even look like no, a TV no, no, show. No, 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 no. I mean, right? apart from the cool cars, apart from maybe the like hair dye. Hair dye? Yeah, that's true. What do you I, got? I, what do you call I, that? I, I, uh, the Don Johnson slash Colin Farrell hair yeah, dye. Yeah, it's the called what? the uh, the Sandy Brown or the. the um, it's called Essence of the Oxidized Rust. No. No? The no. Wheatus. It's like the dirty. The Sandy Wheatus. No, but there's a dirty Sandy Wheatus. The dirty. So we should, we should, we should come up with it now. Well, you're the expert. Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's Abu Jamie. What do you think the hair dye <laughs> is? Uh, All right. Okay, no. forget about that. Okay. Okay, did I convince you? No. Did I convince you a little bit? Yeah. Okay, where did I convince you most so I can just, you know, brush up on my debating skills? Uh, oh, the dirty Wheatus, I think. Really? That's Very it. good. <laughs> Very good. Anyway, tell us what you think. Abu Jamie, don't do anything. And you didn't do your job, by the way, Abu Jamie. Like, follow, subscribe. Please let us know what you think about Miami Vice. Is it as cool as this guy says? I am not so sure. Good job. Okay. <laughs>